How do you feel about this year in 2020? So a lot of people are saying that 2020 was the worst year of their life. They're like, refund 2020, uh, cancel 2020, fuck 2020. And so I just want to give my take on how 2020 was like for me specifically, evaluate how the year was, and then reflect on the upcoming year, 2021. Originally, I was just going to do it by myself. There's something I started doing this year where I go through my goals that I set earlier this year and set the goals for next year prior to the, to the New Year's resolutions. Um, but I thought maybe while doing that, share this with you so that way you can kind of walk away with a lesson or two that could help you go about your life and your entrepreneurship endeavors. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Brian Choi. And in this channel, we talk about entrepreneurship, marketing, and sales. So if you want to talk, if you want to talk, not talk, but see more videos like this, then make sure to subscribe to this channel right now. The red one right there. Smash that like button as let's get right into the video. So I want to start um, by talking about, I started this year um, by setting three goals, three main goals, just like a very high level overview. And then the, the, at the point of recording this right now, as I'm talking to you right now, it's December 31st of 2020 here in Korea. And so I want to go through the three high level goals. Then we'll go into the more in-depth year evaluation and then the uh, reflection for the upcoming year. So first things first, this is something I wrote down earlier this year is flipped, but um, it says 2020 goals. And then it says the year of focus, discipline, and growth. Okay. And there are three goals written on this. And the first thing is make $100,000 profit okay, for this year. And the second one is screen time of one hour and 30 minutes a day or less. And the third one is move to, I first wrote Kiev, Ukraine, then I switched to Bali. So there's something I wrote down, I think around January or, or, or February of this year when I was just transitioning out of the Korean army. So let's kind of break down one by one. Did I achieve this? How far, how far did I fall short? How much did I go over? So on and so forth, right? So the first things first, make $100,000 profit uh, I didn't even come close to that. <laughs> so I thought it would be as easy as, okay, like start a business and then you get to 10K in 30 days. Like it's easy. Like just start a social media marketing agency. Um, and that's what I thought, right? Because the testimonials and the moonshine case studies kind of, they kind of blind you, right? Quite frankly. And most, um, you know, I'm not going to get deep into the, the success rate of these courses and these programs, but, you know, um, when I saw, basically how I started this year was in January, I was still in the Korean army at that time. I discharged on February 28th of 2020. And at that moment, I was kind of transitioning out of the army into becoming a civilian, right? And so at that point, I wasn't doing much. All I was doing is really uh, setting up the foundations for my for my social media marketing agency that I was trying start to try uh, start at the time. And then that included getting a domain name, setting up my websites, setting up my onboarding funnel, whatever. All these things that I didn't need to do. All I just focused on was doing outreach. I was doing a little outreach here and there, but the, 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 the method I was learning from the program simply was so outdated uh, and so ineffective that I was sending about 100, 200 emails a day. Um, and I was about to set one sales call a month, right? And not qualified at all. And so that's how I started this year, but I kept going, even though in the cold <laughs> Korean winter, uh, I kept going, but uh, basic gist for the first five months of this year, I didn't make a single, actually that's a lie. Um, the fifth month when I, was when I signed my first ever uh, paying students and not a client, we'll be going deeper into that. But um, April, April of this year was when I made my first ever dollars online. Okay, so the first four months of this year, they didn't make a single profit, they didn't make a single dime in revenue at all. And in you know, January, I said one sales call. February, I said one sales call. Uh, March, I think I said two or four. And April, I think I said seven, so on and so forth, right? And so you can kind of see the evolution that happened there. Like it, it was not, it didn't start off as fast as I thought it would be, right? Because if you see the testimonials in these courses, or if you see like, oh, I saw my first client in four days, I, I, I got to 10K in 30 days. And um, 
what they don't tell is that it's not really consistent of those results. It's not really duplicatable for most people. And they, a lot of courses and programs just don't tell the client success rates, right? Um, most of the times it's those fight with volume because these are big name gurus. They have a lot of people coming into the program. So they have a lot of testimonials to share, but if you look at the percentage, it's only 10%, 20%, 30% is industry standard, right? And so I think when you ro- enroll into a course or program, I think the expectation needs to be set and you got to understand that you have to take that leap of faith no matter what, just because, you know, obviously you got to. I don't know. You got to go with a program that you you think might help. And obviously a shitty action is still better than no action because you're at least learning something. I have no regrets of the thousand of dollars I spent in the courses that, um, <laughs> that simply did not work well for me, but I always take it as a learning lesson, right? I don't blame anyone for, it. I take responsibility for my actions. And at the end of the day, you got to take a leap of faith, no matter what, because at the end of the day, what are you going to do? Not try quit trying. No. Right. Um, that being said though, so on the fourth month, I got my first ever sale online and that was for $200. It was an affiliate commission from a previous company that was an affiliate for called real social dynamics or an eight figure dating company now transitioning into more self-help, but it was, it was pretty cool because they gave me confirmation. They gave me proof the fact that, Oh, like you can make money online. This is incredible because it was something I was trying to figure out for the past two or three years. Um, when I was making videos on YouTube more regularly, maybe that's where you know me from, or yeah, basically like watching webinar after webinar, free training after free training, trying to crack the code on how do people make money online? Like how do people do this shit? Right. And I really don't know how, and, um, that can be proof that, Oh, like it is possible. And that was more than enough. It was just 200 bucks. Yes. Not a lot, but that was more than enough to get me going. And so it wasn't from like a paying client from my, my social media marketing agency I was trying to, uh, trying to start at the time, but it was from an affiliate commission. And that gave me proof that it is possible to make money online. And then I think the month after that, or the month after May was when I got my first were paying students because I quit, uh, quit having the social media marketing agency. I hated it. I hated talking about ads. I hated all that. Right. And so I started my coaching business where I was helping guys with their social skills. And I started that March or April. And then it took me out of about a month or two where I was able to start signing students. And then in the month of May, um, I signed three students and about a week and a half time frame at $1,500 each. So uh, $4,500 in the month of May. And that's revenue and my expenses, my expenses for the business, it's really low. Um, I'd say at the time it was about like $130 expense. So I guess it's like profit is like $4,400 or something like that. Right. Or $4,300 after merchant fee. So that's my profit in the month of May. Now um, that can be a, by the way, this is going to be a long ass video because I'm just going to like ramble the whole time. But that gave me, that was incredible because that gave me another confirmation that when uh, something I learned from a guy named Iman Gaggi, who, um, who, who has a multi-million dollar business at the age of 20. What he says is when it rains, it pours. And that gave me like so much confirmation that is so true. Like for like, cause like the first five months of starting a business, like I couldn't sign a single paying person. Right. But in, in, in that week and a half time frame, I had three people um, paying me money at $4,500. And, um, and especially in Korea, that's like two or three times more of what people, what basically people, what the age of my father were making. Right. And so that was incredible. Um, and then June and July were zero dollar months. And then August and September, I started signing, uh, students again. I actually have a different offer at the time where I was helping entrepreneurs with, Um, basically optimizing their brain to scale their business, sign more clients. And so had a trickle of students that I was helping at the time. And then I got recruited into a a coaching company called Influence and Impact Coaching Group, which I've left now, but um, that was in September or so. 
um, when I was recruited by a guy named Miles Stutz, who was also my mentor, who helped me sign, who helped me enroll those three paying students for the first time. He was the first ever person and really the only person so far was able to give me like a step-by-step -step process to generate income from online. Not just fluffy, like go out there and add value, but uh, trust the process, but like a step-by-step -step predictable and consistent duplicatable process. And so God love the guy as a person as well. But um, uh, I came short, long story short of the $100,000 $100, profit goal. I netted about um, about $10,000, which is a lot lower than I thought. Um, actually not a lot, 10 to $15,000 profit, right? But I'm not, you know, at first it was agonizing, right? At first it was agonizing because I'm like, why can I succeed like those other guys? Those guys got to 10K in 30 days. Those guys are signing like whale clients. When is my time? And so it was killing me. But later down the line, what I realized was like, I learned a lesson and everyone's on their own path. And it doesn't matter if that guy's 17 and I'm 24 now, it doesn't really matter because I mean, you don't even know how long we're gonna live on this earth anyway. And that person's life is that person's life and my life is my life, right? And so that is something, by the way, this is gonna be like a super, I guess, super tr more transparent than I thought, I guess. I'm just like spitting um, stuff from my brain. But um, that was the first, um, and we'll be diving more into the lessons and so on and so forth. A lot of things have changed this year. And the second goal, which is screen time of uh, one hour and 30 days, 30 minutes a day or less. And what we're gonna do as we go about this video, I'm actually gonna switch back and forth into screen share. And basically, this is something called strides, attracts your habits and so on and so forth. And so, you know, this is screen time. Goal is 30 or less per day, 30 minutes or less per day. And um, this year, I guess I didn't start tracking until 200 uh, or like, uh, I don't know, like 100 days or so in, but um, about 78% success rate. And I did achieve my second goal, which was average about 25 minutes a day which is awesome. Now, in the first two months while I was still, first two or three months while I was still in the military, I was basically spending like two minutes a day on my phone. And that was only to listen to audiobooks, podcasts, and um, so on and so forth. That was basically it. And for the majority of the year, I've really spent any time on my phone. And then later down the line, spending time more, uh, more, more um, time on my phone. And then now I'm not spending more time yet. So 25 minutes, pretty solid. And the reason why I said this as one of the key goals is because it's like that big domino, right? Russell Brunson talks about this, where if you knock down this big domino, then all the small dominoes fall into place. For example, with the screen time, with the phone screen time, I knew that if I spent as minimal amount of time as possible on, on my cell phone, that I knew that I was gonna be more focused, which means that I was gonna be more optimized when I do my outreach, when I do my sales goals. I knew that I had, I would have more time to go read a book. I would have more time to go practice sales. I would have more time to learn more about business, to do more lead generation. I would have more time to sleep, which means that my performance is gonna be So it was the, the, the big domino. And then I'm really super happy with this and um, basically deleted all the apps like Instagram, YouTube, disabled it because I couldn't, uh, my phone wouldn't let it uninstall it. So I disabled it, I, I can't use it. Facebook, uninstalled it. Messenger, uninstalled it. And so it's, it's incredible, right? It's the only times I really use my phone now is for podcasts, audiobooks, and um, using GPS. So that's pretty much it. So super happy with that. And it's just my mental sanity, like feels so much better. And I feel so much more focused now. And the third one I said was move to Kiev, Ukraine, which I later switched to Bali. Uh, I did not achieve that goal, but it's kind of, I don't know, I guess it's kind of close because I moved to this island called Jeju in Korea. And it's um, it's not as cold as, as Seoul. And uh, it's just started snowing here, but it's like, even when it snows, it's a lot less colder than where I used to live in Seoul. And then about after like a month or two, I'm probably going to move back to Seoul. And then after that, who knows, maybe Europe somewhere but the third one i did not achieve it but i'm not mad about that it's still all about the process right so now what i want to do 
now that we knocked this out, is jump into the evaluations. So let's get right into it. Is the 2020 annual evaluation. So this is like the yearly goals, not necessarily goals, but like a review, right? Um, how the year went. So three things that happened this year. I got an honor and discharge from the military on February 28th of 2020. And then I started making money online, which is huge, even though I didn't hit the 100K profit goal. Um, obviously, I'm going to try to hit that this year. I mean, in 2021 and more than that. But um, now I feel like I have everything to everything I need, all the skills I need, copywriting, sales, whatever it may be, whatever um, direction I go into. I'm, I'm really confident in my ability to hit that goal. Um, if I had to set that goal again, which we'll be diving into in the annual goals. But another thing, moved out of my parents' house into my own apartment, which is incredible too, which I never thought it would come um, this soon. I thought it'd take a lot longer than that. But because, especially in Korea, where I know a lot of people that I personally know, uh, some of my friends were there 30, 35 and they're still living in the parents' house. And it's not like me coming from a judgmental perspective, but it, it gives you perspective the fact that like uh, at the age of 24, I was able to move out of my parents' house where the, um, you know, it's, it's really expensive to get an apartment in Seoul. It's kind of like New York City. And culturally, it's just people are more content staying at their parents' house until in their 30s or 40s. So being able to do that was incredible. And also the fact that, um, you know, shit was kind of going downhill at home. <laughs> Things were getting a little intense at home. So let's just, let's just put it at that for now. And so the fact that I was able to move into a more positive environment just gave me so much more peace of mind and um, just uh, my overall mental health. It's been, a, it's been incredible. And some difficulties found were consistency and predictability and plus the growth in revenue. So some months I'd hit 5K, some months I'd hit 2K, some months I'd hit zero. And so that's one thing I found was there needs to be more predictability, predictability, right? Um, that's one thing, huge. And then also the growth, um, keep going, keep going forward. So that is something that I found difficulties. Of course, there are micro difficulties within that difficulty, but you know, but the three things that I learned about myself this year, because the reason why I want to talk about this is because self-awareness is one of those most underrated um, skills in life, but entrepreneurship specifically. So whether you have a coaching business or an agency or you're in sales, it is super important because once you understand like what makes you tick, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, then now you can kind of, it's like you have a car and then there's like a hole in the tire, you want to fix that, right? Or if you've realized that your car is a supercar and it can go like 500 miles per hour, I don't even know if that's possible, but then like you don't have to go at 100 miles per hour. You know what I'm saying? So these things, and especially if your zone of genius is in copywriting, then maybe you want to double down on that instead of trying to make other things your thing, right? For example, like just operations, when you like just hate operations and fulfillment, like if you just like can't do fulfillment, um, just like do what you got to do in the beginning and then hire people for that, right? And vice versa. Because especially being in my previous company, Influence of My Coaching Group, it was such a diverse environment where each team member, and I got to love all of them to death still, um, but each person has their own, own unique ability. So one person on the team their zone of genius would be copywriting. Like they're just a, like a master beast. And another person would be booking sales calls from Facebook Messenger. They were incredible at that. And one person would be like, they were amazing in fulfillment and operations of the business, making sure the clients are getting results, make sure that the client retention rate is high and they upgrade into the high ticket programs. And one person's um, strength would be client culture. And so when I saw that, it just became very clear that you want to double down on your strengths and then um, just focus on that, right? So um, that being said, three things that I learned about this year is I need to become more decisive. A lot of times I get paralyzed and I'm still procrastinating because I got to get everything in perfect. Even shooting this video, I'm just like, ah, oh, I don't have a perfect camera. Like where do I get a camera? And I was like, you know what? Let's just like turn this thing on and like lean, mean, and scrappy, right? 
So that's, that's something that Sam Evans talks about a lot, which is lean, mean, and scrappy. And he talked about the context of building like your first ever online program, but how I think is, is just life in general, right? Lean, mean, and scrappy. And so just, just get it done, start walking, and then you polish it as you go. So be more decisive, trust your gut instinct, no matter what, and stick to your guns. And the second thing is, by the way, you're going to hear uh, our cat in the background, <laughs> but let's keep going. And also I enjoy having time by myself, but also enjoy being around other people. This is one thing that um, I, uh, I had to kind of, kind of take a step back because I thought I was just fine being by myself and grow the group business, grow the business. And then, you know, Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, I'm just like, I be Sam Evans, but I thought I was that, but I'm not. And a lot of times, yes, when I'm working out, I, I want to be by myself and I want to just focus and do what I need to do. And a lot of times I just want to sit at home and just order fried chicken and eat movies, uh, watch movies and just hang out by myself. But also I want to hang out with my friends. I want to go meet people. I want to be social. I want to be this crazy fucker. And so for me, what I realized that I need a mixture of both. Right. And also I'm not Sam Evans. I'm not Iman Gaji. I'm not Dan Bolzerian. I need to find my own path because I was trying to be this person. And yes, you want to model after success, right? Why reinvent the wheel? But how I look at it is like, it's never, it was never binary, right? It was never about like, oh, just be yourself and just like, forget about what everyone else says. It was never that, nor was it about, okay, like just do exactly what the successful person does and you'll be successful. Like, yes, you can succeed both in both ways. But what I realized was somewhere in the sweet spot, which is you model success, you follow blueprint in a framework, and then you make it your own. Right. And so it's kind of like when you go to the gym for the first time, you don't know what exercises, what workouts you need to do, how many reps, how much weight, how much, what should you eat? Right. Um, so you follow someone's workout plan or nutrition plan, like a diet plan of someone who's already figured it out, someone who you resonate with, someone who you feel aligned with. And then as you master that, you make it your own and you experiment and you make it your own thing. And so, you know, with, with this, with life in general, what I realized is that you need to find your own path because everyone's life's kind of different, right? Sam Evans' life's different. Iman Gadget's like, everyone's different, right? Dan Bilzerian, um, because I have a lot of friends who, you know, they, they want different things out of life. Some people just want to travel. Some people just want to settle in one place. And so you got to be, that's why self-awareness is so key. And you find it out as you try different things. It's, Gary talks about going to the buffet and then seeing if you like pasta, if you like sushi, if you like pizza, same thing. And so victories and milestones from this year is I started making money online for the first time, which is incredible. Started living on my own, which is incredible. It's uh, especially if you're um, if you're in a non-ideal situation at home, it's, it's incredible. And then I started meditating daily, something I kind of laughed at for the last two or three years. I'm like, meditation mindset who cares about that but um me personally i don't meditate so i can reincarnate it into a flower i meditate for mainly two reasons the first is to be able to focus and i can't tell you how much of a big difference is made because i remember when i used to read books right i read a book and then i'll just just look at the the words and then after like five or ten pages i realize like i i don't remember a single thing i just spent the last hour reading Right. And so, because I wasn't focusing and when I was talking to people, I wasn't really like there. And so I'd ask the question that they already told me the answer to, whether it be like a regular conversation or on a sales call. And that's, um, I didn't realize how big that was until I started meditating. And then I do something called focus meditation, which is you're only focusing on, um, like that's, that's really, it. you're only focusing on your breath. Right. And then once I started doing that, when I, when I would read a book, when I was on a sales call, like I was able to be there. I was able to find the answer, retain information better. And that just gives you a huge advantage of compared to someone who can't fucking focus and who can't concentrate or memorize. All right. And so that was it. And then um, also I focus for manifestations and stuff like that, but that's for a different video. That's um, that's uh, if you're, if you're more like a logical analytical person, it may be hard to resonate for now, but, um, and I am too, but I'll make a separate video on that. 
but uh, that made a huge difference. And then projects and dreams that advanced further this year. So I couldn't really think of projects or dreams specifically, but I lived in an area called Shinza in Seoul. It's kind of like, um, like one of the most affluent um, areas of, of South Korea. And that was incredible. And I lived there for three months. Um, it was just like what it does to your identity and your confirmations. So what I mean by that is as you walk down the street, it's just like abundance everywhere, right? All the cars are like the big sports cars, the whatever. And, you know, people are more attractive and um, it's just like more lively and all the cafes, all the restaurants, all the bars, like all the, all the fancy places are there. And um, being able to live there was, uh, was truly incredible. I moved to Jeju now for a vacation, but let's see if I move back. And number one lesson from this year was the fact that uh, beliefs shape reality. So beliefs shape reality. And what I mean by that is whatever you believe to be true comes into fruition. And then I'm going to hold on. I'm going to see. I'm going to see if I can. I'm back. So basically what I was saying is that your belief in reality. So whatever you believe to be true becomes true. And I've been saying this for like three years now, three, four years now, but it just became more confirmation. And um, to give an example, when I was in the military, when, so in Korea, in South Korea, going to the military is mandatory for men. And a lot of people, because they go in their early 20s, they say, it's a waste of two years, you're wasting your golden 20s. So people always say you're wasting your golden 20s. And people kind of go into the military, like people avoid, like they're celebrities and regular people literally injuring themselves to not go serve in the military. People tear their ACLs on purpose. People take out their teeth on purpose. People do all sorts of that. Like they, they try to um, manipulate drug tests on purpose and everything in order to not go to the military. That way they can, um, I don't know, spare those, their golden 20s or whatever, right? And so people who do go, uh, who couldn't escape, I guess, they're always complaining and they're always talking about how, man, like we're wasting our golden 20s. Like, what are we doing here? Like, what are we doing here? Like, we hate our lives. Like, this sucks. The government sucks and all that. Like, they literally talk like that, right? And what I realized was they, they say they waste your golden 20s. And then what I found was really fucked up where they do everything possible to make that statement true. What I mean by that is that they would be laying on their in, on their little bed and they're in the, in, the, in, the, in the barrack is called it's called it's like a bunker type room where there's like 10 guys sleep there. And then they would just watch K-pop girl bands shake their money makers and watch K dramas or be on their phone, play League of Legends or whatever. And so that all that's all they'll do, right? That's all they'll do, like from morning to night when they're not working. That's literally all they'll do. And so when I saw that, I was like you're like doing everything possible to make this statement true. It's called a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? And so how I saw it is like, my belief was like, okay, well, if I'm going to do something, like I want to be the best. And so I made that happen. So going to the military, I started as the worst human being at the task that I was assigned to. Uh, like my, my superiors would tell me that, dude, um, like you are the worst person in division history to ever get assigned to this type of work. Like this is really bad. And that's a nice way of putting it, right? How they said it was a lot worse than that. <laughs> a lot more crass in the military. They're not gonna, they're not gonna, they're not gonna sugarcoat anything. And in about uh, like three or four months time, I out, I outperformed every single one of them as a 30 person division. And then I just said division record after division record. It became historically the the highest producing person in the division in the specific role I was at. And then I climbed up the military ranks in my positions in the shortest amount of time possible in division history. And then when I had more time as I was transitioning out, I spent when other people were watching K-pop and K-drama, I was in the in the library reading books about sales, marketing, copyright, and so on and so forth, and self-help. And so by the time I got out, at least it took me a while, but at least, you know, I got a head start over everyone else my age that were in the military um, to, to make at least some income. 
and then um, go from there, right? Um, and I have like new opportunities coming this year, which is awesome as well. But, you know, through that experience on what I found, it's like my beliefs were that if I'm going to do something, I might as well become the best at it. And also might as well make the most out of it. And also you can like, you, there are things you can still control, right? Because that's my beliefs. Like I got something out of it. Whereas um, people who believe that, oh, like we can't do anything, they didn't do anything. So that was the number one lesson from this year. I'm sure, I mean, it's still relevant to any other year, but especially this year, there was just like a huge confirmation. So uh, reflections for the upcoming year is to find myself. And so I know that sounds kind of wonderless, kind of fluffy, but what I mean is this, like this year was just like, in, in 2020 later down the line I'm like like what do i really want to do out of life like who am i right so my purpose and my identity i had a little bit of um like soul searching to do and i still am and uh, i felt really lost and really burnt out towards the end of the year because i'm like what do i really want to do in my life and um that kind of drove me insane right that kind of drove me insane because i felt like everyone else in the entire world um people who are even younger than me they know what they want to do with their lives but like, I feel like I don't, and I felt behind. Um, I felt like I was behind, like, why can't I figure this out? But um, uh, I guess, and I was trying to figure out like, well, like, how do I figure this out then? Well, how do I figure it out? It's by experimenting, like, and see what you like. It's like going to the buffet, right? It's like going to the buffet and see what kind of food you like. And so life is kind of the same way. I made a lot of videos on this where if you feel lost, then, I mean, you, you gotta do something right? It's as simple as that. And so uh, if you want to see those videos, I'm going to link it below and um, we can pop it up here, but uh, go see those. But that's, that's um, one of those reflections. The second reflection is more hedonism. So I felt like this year I was suppressing a lot of things I wanted to do, like meeting women, meeting friends, eating good food, <laughs> like relaxing and, and all that, having, having dope ass memories. And I felt like it was just all just humbleness. Um, and that's great, but I want to have more hedonism and what I intend to do the upcoming 2021 year. So that was for the 2020 annual evaluation. And then let's hop on over to the 2021 annual goals. Cool. So um, what do I want to achieve this year? Um, this is like the high level overview. And then I did like a little goal here. It's a little... It can be a little uh, in detail, but we'll see. So first I want to do $300,000 cash collect the profit, um, whether it be commissions or my, the own revenue generated. And then um, what's something I've never done before that I'm trying this year? Live in Europe. So I did live in Europe for a little bit. I lived in Berlin for I think like two or three weeks, but I didn't really do anything. I just like went there, um, went to different restaurants and cafes, traveled a little bit. Um, but most of the time I was just like editing videos and uploading a lot of videos. I wasn't doing much. And so this year, I kind of want to live in Europe, kind of enjoy the culture a little bit, meet more people. And um, um, yeah, because I just, I just want to go to Europe. And I intend on doing that. And how can I improve from last year's treat yourself more, eat good food, reward yourself more, buy yourself books, buy yourself cool headphones and clothes. Um, yeah, and meet more people. Because <laughs> I feel like at one point, I was just becoming a robot. And um, one thing I realized, I had to be more human. I had to meet more people. I had to be more decisive, like we talked about. Have more faith and stick to your guns. Because a lot, especially because I like to be analytical and step-by-step -step and pragmatic. But that's great. Um, definitely a time and place for that. But at times also, when there seems like, okay, like, I don't know if this is going to work. You still got to stick to your guns and have faith. Making decisions. Choosing a career path and so on and so forth. And so uh, enjoy life a little more. Life is a game. Never forget that. It's, it's never it's like at the, at the time being of something happening, it feels like it's the end of the world. And it's like so important and so make or break. But if you look back to those types of decisions, like just think back to your own life, you, they're never as serious as we thought, right? We're, we always say like, why were we like struggling for that long? Why were we making us such a big deal out of it? Um, it's really not a big deal, right? And get back into YouTube. That's going to be kind of iffy about this, but uh, I'll try to make one video a week, if not two videos a month. That's one thing I'm trying to do. 
or what I want to do at least and pick up one new hobby unrelated with work. It would be something cool. Um, I saw one girl just started surfing in California. I'm like, that's so dope. So it would be dope to have something like that. But to go a little deeper into it, um, so I made four categories, right? And this is something I, uh, I got from Quasi, um, who is a coach of mine who helped me with manifestation and entrepreneurship. Um, basically, when you want to create like a vision board or a goal, um, one of my past mentors, Luke Croak, he also talks about this. You want to have like three, if not four categories. So wealth, relationships with love, health, and spirituality, higher purpose, whatever it may be. And also I uh, just put family and friends. And for the wealth category, this year's goal is $300,000 cash collected profit. So not, you know, contract value, not revenue, but um, like take home in my pocket, right? So $300,000. And, you know, you may be wondering, but you didn't even hit $100,000 this year. How are you going to hit $300,000 next year? Like, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know. It's just like that faith, right? It's, I, I'm not one of those people that are like, oh, 10 extra goals and like whatever. Um, I, I do believe that you should set somewhat of them, something that could actually happen, right? Something just a little out of your reach. And to be honest, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. I think that's the whole point of making a goal, right? Um, in the realm of it can still happen. And I feel like I have all the skills necessary to hit this, um, especially in terms of sales. But uh, now it's a matter of executing and staying consistent, right? So I think it's all in the head. And it's really important to know, like, why do you need to do this? Because if you don't know the why, like purpose is the highest driver of human behavior. And so because we know that to be true, purpose is basically like knowing your why. Right. And so people talk about what's your why, what's your mission in life. Um, some people say saving children in Africa, whatever it might be. But in this goal specifically, what is the purpose of this goal is I want to have uh, peace of mind and knowing that I can afford the things I want. By the way, this is really small, so I'm going to enlarge it. There you go. Um, feels a fucking great to do whatever the fuck you want to do and not flinch from a price tag. It feels great. Um, and take care of the people I care about and pay back old friends and family in upstate New York. They were um, really, they took care of me when, when holidays, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, they took me in and invited me for dinner when, um, you know, at home, we didn't really do that. And um, one of my best friend's mother, who was basically like my second mother, she paid for my basketball camp uh, just so I can go with my best friend. And I think that was like 400 bucks, 600 bucks or something like that. She just like did it um, without me asking to. So those things, um, I still haven't forgot. And, um, I do want to go and pay back. Right. So how are you going to do it? Because if you like, it, it's good to have the goal, but you can have the action step, right. Um, that way you can actually follow through. So find one new sales opportunity. It looks like this one's in the bag and collect commissions from my previous company and collect remaining payments from my coaching students. And then, you know, obviously, um, hmm take sales calls and um, make sales. And so love relationships, meet and date 25 new girls. Um, the reason, the logic behind coming to this number is like around like two girls a month. I feel like that's possible. I feel like in the first three months of 2021, I feel like I'm going to be more focused on business. But after that, um, maybe uh, I can uh, kind of go rampage. And I don't know still, right? Um, because I don't know how the clubs are going to be open. Probably not. And so we'll see. But um, either your social media, whatever it might be. But um, why do I need to do it? Uh, pure physical pleasure, of course. I'm not gonna lie to you. And then genuinely enjoy. I genuinely enjoy having female presence around, and I want to get in touch with my emotional side a little more, be more human. Because a lot of times when you're in business, you get really analytical, logical, and you lose that side of you. And I want to. I want to have that human touch, right? So. Uh, how are you gonna do it? Get it in, coach, and allocate one to two days a week to meeting women. So consistency is key. And obviously the compound effects will be here. Health, um, two things. And I try to quantify this and make it more tangible to what as much as possible. But if I couldn't, um, I just put it this optimized performance because I don't know really how to quantify that. Um, and then that's the performance side. And on the aesthetic side is 8% body fat. So 
why do I want it? I want to get an unfair advantage in business. So if I'm optimized, if my brain and my body is optimized, I can be more focused and take more sales calls with more endurance and more optimus, uh, optimal efficiency and effectiveness, right? So that means more cash, which is always great. And it feels good to feel good. Like I can, I can tell you, like if you eat the right things and if it feels as good in your body, it just feels incredible. I don't have that feeling. And of course, everything we do is because of a feeling. And I want to look dope in clothes and without clothes. And I want to develop more drive and hunger in life and be and feel more alive, right? If you are going to the gym or testosterone, and then um, if you're eating better, obviously you feel more alive. And so how are we going to do that? Work out three times a week. And right now, let's start with body weight exercises because I don't know how the gyms are here. And uh, I'm going to get a performance coach and a fitness coach um, for aesthetics. And so spirituality, I just wrote down trans surf reality. And I know it sounds really vague, but the how section makes up for it. So let's keep going. So manifestation works. I know this sounds really woo-woo, but I've just seen so many proofs within my own life and my friend's lives and um, my mentor's lives that you can really like bend reality, basically. And um, I would have more peace of mind. And life is just better when you feel more fulfilled. It gives you more energy. And um, why be miserable when you can have more, be more happy and fulfilled, right? And so how I'm going to do that is do the focus meditation that we talked about earlier, uh, once a day before first work block. I've been doing that religiously, um, except for the while I'm on vacation. And then I want to do pure meditation every Sunday before dinner. Pure meditation is like the visualization manifestation kind of uh, meditation and it's uh, super powerful. And read Vadim Zeland's books, uh, Reality Transurfing. I'm coming to the end of that. Next book by Vadim is going to be Transurfing in 78 Days. And I'm going to be reading that with my friend. We're keeping each other accountable. And then uh, we'll go from there. And lastly, family and friends, spend more time with great humans. Uh, like I said, I just have a lot of fun being around people and creating dope memories. My friends are, uh, care about me and I care about them. And then I'm going to do that is do one container event a week. But what the basically is like a group event, whether it be group brunch, uh, Sunday brunch, or a night at the nightclub. So whatever it may be. So, and I'm going to review that um, before December 31st of 2021 and see how that goes. So that was, whew, that was a lot. Um, but that was it for 2020 review and my 2021 reflections. And to be honest, like people talk about 2020 being like, fuck 2020, like, can I get a refund? Like, I, I didn't feel that way at all. And I'm not trying to like stay positive. I'm not even trying to consciously stay positive. It's just, this is how I felt like 2020 felt like, I mean, yeah, I was a little different. I get that. And I know some tragic things have happened, but I mean, the show still goes on. The camera's still rolling. And, you know, things didn't go as the way I wanted it to. And... But, you know, at the end of the day, like, that's, that's fine. And so who knows if it's not going the way you want, because everything could be unfolding exactly the way you want it to be. You may not just know it yet. Um, topic for a different day, right? But that being said, um, if you enjoyed, <laughs> if you're still here, first of all, I want to give props to you and hope your 2020 was incredible and wish you nothing but the best for 2021. And if you want to see more videos like this and keep you updated with how my 2021 is going to be in terms of entrepreneurship sales and um, your life in general, make sure to subscribe to the channel right now, the red button, click on the bell notification and select all that way you get notified every time a new video comes out, smash the like button. And I really love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. So let me know your thoughts as well. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.